Hello dear friends. Today we will get acquainted with the memoirs of a Soviet veteran who was the commander of a company of heavy tanks KV-1. Here, the memoirs of a Soviet war correspondent who participated in a tank attack for the first time will also be presented. Well, we're starting. In December, 1140 years, after being appointed commander of a tank platoon in a marching company, I was sent to a tank factory in Chelyabinsk to capture the first KV-1 tanks in the assembly and send them to the front. Work at the tank assembly site gave the crews a lot of useful things in future actions. At the end of February, 1042, our tank company to capture KV-1 tanks was sent to the 12th Tank Brigade of the 9th Army of the Southern Front, which fought in the area of the cities of Izium, Slavyansk Kramatorsk. Upon the arrival of the echelon with a tank company, it was necessary to warm up and start the tanks on the platform before unloading, using a steam locomotive. Due to the deep snow cover, the driver Bondarenko planted my tank on the bottom. The company went to the combat area, and the crew and I had to dig out the tank for a day. By the beginning of hostilities, the personnel of our company had been reconnoitering the area, laying out routes to their starting positions. The task of the attack was set by the personal commander of the Brigade Badenov. Being in waiting positions, 15 kilometers from the front line, the crews lived under the tanks. They dug a trench in the snow, which they ran into with a tank. The top was covered with a tarpaulin, and a fire was made under the tank. It is resistant to factory readiness of the engine and heating of the crew. From time to time, with the help of diesel fuel, they were washed from soot. On March 17, 1042, after artillery preparation, the 12th Tank Brigade, briefly with infantry, began to enter State Farm No. 5. The first line of defense was broken through, but repeatedly opposed, using artillery aimed at the offensive. The tank commander of the company, Senior Lieutenant Gulyov, a worthy combat experienced crew that had gone through the Finnish war, broke away from the company, wedged into the detection defenses, but was hit and surrounded by the Germans. The crew, consisting of Gulyov, a driver and radiation heroic, defended himself to the last shell, which was broadcast on the radio. Later, after taking possession of the settlement, their tank was found burned with the dead crew inside the car. After the heroic meeting of the commander, I was appointed company commander. That battle showed that the ammunition load of the KV-1 tank in the amount of 28 shells does not fully cover the conduct of hostilities. For example, during the offensive, it was necessary to replenish the tank's ammunition twice from the battlefield. Subsequently, the ammunition load was brought up to 80 shells, which were laid on the bottom, which created an unfortunate Dutch crew. In addition, when winning the march, the KV-1 was significantly different from the T-34 and T-70, which also participated in tank brigades. However, as the KB-1 infantry support tank is best, thick armor and increased visibility of pop-up infantry take cover at the expense of the tank during the attack. When moving at the first transmission speed, the KB-1 was the same as those who left in the attacking soldier, while the T-34 tanks broke away from their infantry. It should also be noted that over a period of time, as it became known later, new modifications of this tank were developed. In addition, most of the KV-1 tanks did not need optics, since the Kharkov plant was evacuated. However, all new tanks were provided with frames. In the first 1142nd year, the 12th Tank Brigade continued to conduct fruitless military operations for the possession of the cities of Slavyansk and Kramatorsk. I remember that during the offensive, the tanks of the company stood up due to the strong fire of the base and the base of the infantry. The radio crew was turned off. I had to arm myself with a hammer and, running from tank to tank, knock on the armor and indicate the direction of attack. About the coherence of the crew of my tank, there was a case of detection by a ram of an anti-tank detection gun. During the battle, the driver Bondarenko, for a moment ahead of the shot, rammed the cannon of the outcome along with the calculation. As a result of this attack, the cannon occupied a firing socket near the house, the tank ran into the foundation with its bottom. There was a sagging of the tracks, and besides, the roof of the house collapsed on the tank. Under these conditions, the crew quickly got out of the tank through the lower hatch and, having secured the self-extraction log, descended from the barrier. After English time, the tank was again in battle. 
During the offensive in the vicinity of the village of Golia Dolina, in my tank, the correspondent of the newspaper and later the famous writer Vadim Sabko took part in the attack. He published his impressions immediately, in a frontline newspaper, and later in his collection. I quote this article completely further, as it shows the very important feelings of a person who first participated in a tank attack. The heavy handle of the hatch sank down, and darkness sets in in the tank. Only in front of the driver are small lights on. Behind me, a powerful engine roars dully. Tank in starting position. We're guessing on the attack. I am sitting behind a gunner radio operator in a heavy tank. Ahead of me is a machine gun, and below, near the feet, are discs for several thousand deaths, hidden in metal circles. I can see part of the field through a small hole. We are standing in front of a hillock, the Germans are already behind it. The tank commander, Lieutenant Zarkoy, is still quite young. He recently graduated from high school, grew up in combat, became an experienced tanker, became a company commander, and received this appointment as a reward. The tank surged forward. There is no clang of caterpillars inside, only the hum and the feeling of movement of a steel machine. We're leaving over the hill. And then the first shot shakes the tank. Far ahead of the farm, snow and earth are exploding upwards. This is the tank commander, Lieutenant Zarkoy, opening fire on enemy strongholds. I closely monitor the fire of the cannon. In my hands is a formidable weapon, a tank machine gun. The time will come when I, too, will have to join the fight. Fire. Commands Zarka, and immediately fired. Fire. He orders again, the tank shudders again. Near a small, light hill, defeats are torn, one, another, a third. Suddenly, as if from under the ground, figures of people jump out. It was the shells of the tank that broke some kind of shelter and the Germans were fleeing from it. Now it's my turn. The machine gun at hand begins to shake fractionally. All I hear is an incessant roar. Throwing up his arms high, one German falls backward, then another, the rest squat from machine gun fire and crawl over the hill. The tank is moving forward. The gun shoots. All machine guns fire. And at the same time, strong armor emits blows. It beats the German anti-tank artillery. Enemy aircraft fly in. Bombs fall near the tank. Like armor-piercing shells hitting armored vehicles with a hammer, not damaged, he goes forward, it's not without reason that his armor was forged at the factories of our motherland. With a firm hand, Lieutenant Zarkoy leads his tank into battle. He maneuvers it in such a way as to use all his firepower. And immediately, as soon as something living ignites in the sight of a machine gun, I pull the trigger. An amazing, indescribable, never experienced feeling of protecting me. This is for Kiev, this is for Kharkov. I think, and I want grey hostile tires against the machine gun to appear more often, I want him to scribble incessantly. With fire, caterpillars crush our enemy tanks, and it is no coincidence that the Germans are so afraid of tank attacks. However, these are not all possibilities, to sit with the tank commander. The weight of the car remains, and this requires his exceptional skill, otherwise you can ruin the car and the entire crew. In the practice of tankers, this is called a ram, and perhaps this word does not have much meaning. When in one of the battles the Germans especially cunningly placed their anti-tank guns, Lieutenant Zarkoy did not for a moment think about how to act. One of the cannons was placed especially cunningly. The Germans hit it in a stone house, rolled out a few shots of shots and immediately, so as not to notice where the fire was coming from, they hoisted the gun back. This gun delayed the advance of our infantry, did not allow us to approach our tankers. And Zarkoy decided to destroy the population. And before that, just opposite the gun, there was some kind of our tank. The comrade was in danger, and Lieutenant Zarkoy did not hesitate for a single second. At full speed, he dispersed the car, and the tank hit his own in the wall of the house. An anti-tank gun, Germans, shells, all this perished under the rubble. With a powerful jerk, he tore his tank out from under the rubble of Zarka. It was a joint maneuver of the tank commander and Bondarenko's driver. They acted simultaneously, as if the same will guided them. A few more hours of the terrible tension of the tank battle, and it seems that our tankers are actually doing a heroic job. Shells and air bombs, armor-piercing shells and incendiary cartridges, the Germans are throwing everything against our tanks, 
but this does not help. The infantry, along with tanks, enters a small village. Another village was liberated from the fascist invaders. For these military operations I was awarded the First Order of the Red Banner. That's all for today. If you liked the video, then support it with a like, and subscribe to the channel. Bye everyone, see you soon.